It might be hard to imagine, but this fancy building and this pizza oven have something in common. Have you figured out what it is? They're both made from bricks and mortar, which might be called fundamental building materials. The word element often means a fundamental building block, something that can't be broken down any smaller. Bricks and mortar are elements of masonry work, just like nails and lumber might be elements of carpentry. The building blocks of reading and writing are letters and punctuation. Put them together in the right way, and you have sentences, paragraphs, and books. The world of arts also has identified elements, building blocks. Theater, dance, music, they, they all have their own lists of elements. The world of visual art has identified seven elements, or building blocks, as well. If you look around the room right now, I bet you see colors. Colors can be divided into color families, like warm colors, red, yellow, orange. Cool colors, blue, green, some purples and then neutral colors like black, white, and gray. Do you have colors that you love? Now look around again. I bet you could also find some dark objects or areas in the room and light objects in the room. Dark objects might be dark blue, dark brown, or black. Light objects might be yellow, pink, or white. Look around. Are you seeing colors and values? Color and value are two of the building blocks, or elements, of visual art. If you put your finger in the air and then move your finger around, you're making a line. You may think of a line as only being on a flat surface, like a piece of paper, but lines can exist in space as well. Now put your finger in space again, remember where you start, and begin to make a line away from that starting point. Maybe your line is straight or maybe it's smooth, but eventually return to the point that you started from. Can you see what you just made? A shape. Sometimes shapes have straight sides and sometimes they're curved, but line and shape are two more of the building blocks or elements of visual art. Touch your shirt. Now touch your desk or your chair. Do they feel exactly the same or a little different? You are feeling differences in texture. Texture can be something you feel or something that you only see. This desk looks like rough wood, for example but it's just a printed texture, which is sometimes called visual texture. The room you're in has a lot of three-dimensional space. Some things take up a lot of space, while other things don't. Some objects are in front of or overlapping other objects. You can tell they're overlapping because the closer object is hiding some of the farther objects. Space also exists in two dimensions, such as a piece of paper. When creating an artwork on paper, we can decide if we want to use a lot of space or very little. We can also overlap objects, even in two dimensions. Space is the sixth element of visual art. Finally, objects that are three-dimensional have a special element named just for them. That's the element of form. Form is the shape of a three-dimensional object. The word shape usually refers to two-dimensional objects, while form is the similar word for three-dimensional objects. The shape of a three-dimensional object is called its form. Sometimes we want to represent a three-dimensional object in two-dimensional space, like on a piece of paper. In this case, we say we are giving the illusion of form, and we usually accomplish that 
through changes in value. So that was all seven elements of visual art. See if you and your elbow partner can remember all seven. Count on your fingers and see how many you can recall. Let's start with understanding shapes. Shapes with curved sides are sometimes called organic shapes. In the space below where you wrote the word curved, draw lots of organic shapes, like I'm doing. Yours don't have to match mine. Use your own imagination. The term geometric means straight-sided shapes. In the area below, make lots of shapes that have straight sides. Again, make up your own versions. You don't have to copy mine. If a shape has both straight and curved sides, we call it a hybrid shape. Go ahead and use the space below to make up some shapes that have straight and curved sides. Now that you understand the three categories of shapes, let's learn some textures made from lines. The first texture we'll make is called waves. I like to make a single wavy line across the middle of the space with some large curves and some smaller curves. Repeat this pattern as close as you can below the original line until you've filled the space below. I like to turn my page over to do the other half. Here is the completed wave pattern. Complete yours now. Zigzag is a similar effect, with a more geometric, less organic approach to the line. I'll make a single zigzag line across the middle of the space. Repeat this pattern as close as you can below the original line until you've filled the space below the line. Again, I like to turn my page over to do the other half. The brick pattern can be started with two horizontal lines. Divide up the top space into rectangles that are about twice as long as they are tall. That makes the top row of bricks. We're going to make what's called a common running bond pattern of bricks, which means that the middle of a brick is the seam of the edge of the bricks below. Make sure each line is positioned at the middle of the bricks above. While this looks like an acceptable brick pattern, it gets even more realistic when we round the edges of the bricks and widen the space to make what's called the mortar area. The spiral pattern. This starts with about three to five very large spirals in the space you have. Then draw in a few medium-sized spirals, fitting them around the first spirals, touching but not overlapping. Then we'll create dozens of small spirals, fitting around the medium and large spirals. And if you have room, Add in tiny little spirals around all the other spaces. Choose one of these four textures to fill into the five areas in the example project above. I'm going to choose the zigzag pattern and place it in this second area, this sort of almond shape that was created in the overlapping space of the two teardrop shapes. Just like before, I drew my original zigzag pattern and I'm filling the area below with lines as close together as I can make them. And then I'll turn the page over to do the same pattern above, filling the space available. Use the same pattern in a different area. I'll choose this fourth area over here, and again, the same zigzag pattern, filling up this 
quadrilateral shape that can be found in the fourth area. We're going to add colors of different values to our shapes. Choose three oil pastels from the same color family. For example, I might choose red, orange, and yellow. That gives me a dark, medium, and light version of the warm colors. Similarly, I could choose dark green, medium green, and light green to have colors in the cool color family. If you like neutral colors, black, white, and gray is a good starting point. If a student chose red, orange, and then blue, this might show a confusion since red and orange are warm colors and blue is a cool color. Choose your three colors and check that everyone around you is clear on the idea of staying within the same color family. We're going to use the dark on the edge, light in the middle approach to coloring the shapes. This could give the illusion of form in our shapes. I'm going to start by coloring with my dark red around the edge and then using a cardboard blocker to get sharp edges right up to the side so I don't have to be quite so careful when I'm coloring. I move from the dark red to the lighter orange color here. I want to make sure that I don't get a sharp line when it changes from orange to red. That sharp line is a common mistake and the way to avoid it is to blend or overlap the orange into the red. Notice how I'm using little circles over into the red area. A light pressure and notice how that sharp line sort of disappears. This is the effect we're after. As I move into the yellow, again I want to avoid that sharp line showing the change from yellow to orange and I do that by using a light pressure and overlapping with the yellow oil pastel into the orange region. This creates a yellow orange and that line disappears. Once you've finished your example project, you're ready for the next phase where you will create an original work of art collaboratively with other students. One of the things you'll bring to the group is your version of a shape that you would like to suggest. You might want an organic shape, a geometric shape, or even a hybrid shape. The first shape that I drew is ideal. It has about four sides and one curve, and it's simple enough to be easy to trace. My second example is way too complicated. It will be hard to trace and unnecessarily difficult. Look critically at your design and ask yourself if it could be any simpler. For example, this original shape has way too many changes and it's too complicated. Even simplified, it still has eight sides, which is quite a few. Redesigning it one more time, it certainly looks like a capital V, but it's an even simpler shape and visually it's still pretty interesting sketch out some designs that you'd like to consider. When you have a final design, make sure that you draw large enough. Try to touch all four sides of the cardboard. Notice how my curve here is trying to touch all the edges. Draw over and over, smoothing out your lines, simplifying them as needed. Nobody will see the lines you make on this piece of cardboard. So take your time and make the shape look great. So this is my organic shape, but I think I'm going to try a geometric shape as well. So I flip the cardboard over and I'll try to design a geometric shape. Mine's going to be based on the V shape I made earlier, but even simpler. So here's my geometric shape. Notice again I'm trying to touch all four sides of the cardboard to ensure that my shape is large enough. And then I get to decide which shape do I prefer this straight-sided geometric shape or the organic shape on the other side. Make your decision and cut out your shape so that you're ready to bring it to your group. Notice how the lines on the other side really don't matter. You'll be bringing your design to your group and your group will have to choose one design 
to use for the group project. Of course, since only one design can be used, it's a strong choice to be flexible, to compromise and not demand that the design be yours. You know you'll be ready for the next phase of this project when you know how to make textures, understand blending oil pastels, know the seven elements of visual art, and have a shape cut out to offer to your group.